Thanks for watching. Today I'm interviewing Dr. Scott Lynn, who believes that he has found the key to consistency, the real difference between why pros are so consistent and why everyone else is degrees of less consistent. The pros do this one thing every single time and everyone else is doing this thing different every single time. He first discovered this in 2018 when he got to measure Tommy Fleetwood and since then he's been refining and measuring more and more players and starting to see what is actually happening. If I give them five swings with their driver, the first one will be 95, the second one will be 75, the third one will be 80 and that's what creates inconsistency, right? Those are different mechanics on every single swing. So this is Dr. Scott Lynn. He has worked with a lot of different major champions, including Colin Morikawa, Bryson Shambo. He's really the most sought after voice in golf when it comes to ground forces and what the ground is doing. And more people are starting to understand that it's not really too much about the positions, but about the pressure. It's one of our best videos yet. You're gonna love it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm here in the backyard of Dr. Scott Lynn. This is a really important video that we wanted to do for a long time but we're always put off, but this is important. Hey, Scott. How you doing? I have to introduce you guys to my new facility here. Yeah, this we is moved it. from this the, not the indoor garage. garage with the wood to, we've upgraded a little bit, so. Yes, uh, so we're, we're uh, taking advantage of the California weather. One thing I want to talk about, Scott, is at the beginning of the year, I put out a poll that surprised me that where I said, what would you like to get better? You know, asking all the Be Better golfers now, yeah. almost 150,000. What would you like to get better at in 2024? and I had uh, driver straightness. I wanted specifically to say straightness because I didn't want it to get it looped up with consistency. Just sure. like driver straightness, driver distance, iron play, wedges, short game, putting. Driver distance did not win, which is what like, if you go to like golf industry people, they're always like, oh, push distance, sell distance. That's what people want. I was like, maybe for like a certain demographic, but I think for the real uh, be better golf kind of person that's playing golf all the time. They know like, hey, like if I can hit it, at least get it in play, then I'm actually playing. Sure. And uh, driver straightness won. Yeah. So today, what we usually talk about when we're, and I think there's a scientific reason, but when we're usually doing the swing catalyst videos that you guys have seen, we're talking a lot about like getting numbers higher. Like, oh, you hit that seven iron 97 miles an hour uh, club head speed. And we're always talking about like distance and stuff like that. Uh, today, this video is going to be about using pressure, not just in your feet, but throughout your whole body to be more consistent. So my first question is going to be, uh, what are the differences you see, especially when it comes to the ground force, between really consistent players and really inconsistent players? Um, well, this was something that I learned, I think this was about 2018. We were at the Players' Championship uh, in Ponte Vedra, Florida, and uh, Tommy Fleetwood came to hit some shots on the plate, and this was... A couple months before he shot whatever it was, 62 at the U.S. Open, remember, in, at Shinnecock, I believe mm -hmm. it was? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was at Shinnecock. Um, so, playing pretty well at the time. Yeah. And I brought him in, and our standard tester protocol for pros, just to get an idea of what their swing does, is we hit five wedges, five six irons, and five drivers. So he hit 15 shots for me, and literally yeah. everyone was like... Yeah, yeah, on a rope. Right on yeah. a rope, on the line that we called for him. And then I looked at the ground reaction force data, and if we looked at the amount of pressure shift that he got into his trail side maximally, it was within one or two percent on all 15 of those swings. Regardless of if it was a wedge or a six iron, did you also say, say driver? And driver, yeah. All and, of them were so the same. Repeat that again. So what, what was it that he did exactly the same? The maximal pressure shift into the trail side. All right, so here just showing the consistency of Tommy Fleetwood and its pressure shift. Uh, even though the pressure trace looks different between driver and six iron um, you can see this is when he reaches his max trail side pressure you see he's 75 percent into the trail side with his six iron um, and then if we go on to driver here this is his driver's swing so now the pressure shift is here so the pressure shift looks kind of different so people who really get into the shape of the pressure shifts i don't really concern myself too much with that but what is important is that we're pretty consistent throughout the bag with our max trail side pressure shift. So you can see happens around the same time and it's the exact same amount into the trail side with driver and six iron. This is the way that we maintain consistency. I believe by having a stock swing that we know our pressure shift is gonna be consistent every time. And one really interesting thing that I've kind of been thinking about here with anybody swing is how much pressure they get into their trail side. And so you can see, 
Um, Matt Wolf's pretty down the middle of the road, right? So he's about 84% into his trail side there. 84% is kind of down the middle. Our PGA Tour data ranges from 60% into the trail side to 100% into the trail side. And so he has a very centered pivot or a very centered shift into the trail side. So like when you take the club away, you know, some people will get 95% into their trail side. Some people will get 65, some people will get 80. And if you're hitting a stock shot, and that's what I always tell people like this right here isn't golf. Right, you got a perfect lie, you got no wind, you got no rough, like there's nothing here that's to change anything. And so you should know what your stock swing looks like in these perfect conditions. Because then when you go out to the course, you can adjust from stock. Yeah. But if you don't know what your stock is, because I've had inconsistent players or players that aren't very good on here, and like if I give them five swings with their driver, the first one will be 95, the second one will be 75, the third one will be 80. And that's what creates inconsistency, right? Those are different mechanics on every single swing. I find that often with really good players. I'll have a player come in and hit, like their six irons will be like 75 every shot into the trail side, but their drivers will be like 85 every shot into the trail side. Yeah. So that's a big difference. Yeah. And if you track your stats, I'll always ask them, what's your strokes gained irons versus driver? And they're like, well, I gain three with driver, I lose three with irons. Okay, well, let's make the irons look more like the driver and you're probably gonna be okay. fine there. Okay, so, so. You're, you're, you're pattering. Oh, that's interesting. So, so a lot of people say that there's a, uh, golf swing, but then there's driver swing, which is a little different because it's on a tee and other yeah. things like that, but that's not really what you see. I don't think I see that with the, with the best players. Now, mm -hmm. if you're altering your stock shot with driver, so I know there's some players that get on a wide open par five and they're like, okay, now I'm going to hit more up on it. I'm going to do something oh, okay. different. Okay, well, that's, that's a different thing because that's, that's not your stock shot. Right. But you need to know what your stock shot is so that you can alter it. Oh, now you get into the wind and I want to hit it a little lower and I want to maybe take some spin off of it. That's not a stock shot either. That will change the, the, the pressures. But I think the best players know what their stock is and then can adjust from there if they need to. But if you don't know what your stock is, you're kind of screwed to get started. Okay, so let's get under the hood of this consistency sure. issue a little bit. We have the swing catalyst dual force plate okay. set up here. And let's, let's see how consistent you are. So why don't you hit okay, sure. two or three shots for me? Okay. And we will uh, see how consistent you are. At getting... And we're recording this screen. Yep. All right, yep. great. Scott will have this plate specifically and uh, all this tech out at the Be Better Golf School coming yep. up on March 18th and 19th. We still have a few spots left. I think uh, we still have about four spots left. So go to BeBetterGolf.net slash school and you can learn all this because I do see the, uh, the best before and afters of any tech or teacher with this stuff. So, Okay, so hit a shot, right? Go for it. Okay. Okay. And now just let that one measure. Let's just do two, just for argument's sake. Sure, yeah. Okay, now hit with me one more. One sounded a little skinny. Yeah, the second oh. one, but it felt about the same. Okay, so we got two on there. Let's have a look. So let's have a look at this first. This is the second one you took. So here in the second swing you took, and obviously you hadn't warmed up. There's like a whole bunch of, you know. Sure variables that we put in here but so what i'll do is i'll advance this swing to where you get maximally into your trail side and you get there pretty early and you get 85 percent maximally into your trail side so you can see there it's 85 percent into the trail side so you can see right here yep 85 percent is your maximum pressure shift gotcha. off the ball and then the second swing this was i guess this was the first swing and you can see it's 70% off the trail side. So that okay. is a much different, the timing is the same, but the magnitude is way different. Yeah, way different. Yeah. And so to me, that is something that, you know, is probably a guide for inconsistency. And so then we would have to figure out what is optimal for you. Right. Is that 85 optimal for you? Is the 75 optimal for you or the 70 optimal for you? There's a whole bunch of ways to, to get to what I think is optimal for you, or I can mm -hmm. ask you what shot you prefer. Like a 70% pressure shift into the trail side generally allows you to get left and get a more leftward swing direction earlier, generally. So well, that I know would be that more of a cut pattern. In general, I then overshift. Yeah. You know, so I would think that I would want to do the thing that, that keeps me more rotational yeah. and gets me from sliding. Sure. So, so that would be getting away from like an 80. Because when you get 85 over here, you got to get back. Yeah. And that's what gives you that lateral push. Okay. So if somebody's kind of self-diagnosis and we'll kind of shortcut the process here a little bit for the video. If I feel like, okay, I like that 
71 yeah. a little better. And I want to make 70 this feeling of like I have my trigger, which is the, which you also see in the graph there. Yeah. This trigger, then I go 70, and then and then I go into my swing. Yeah. How can I like start to nail that consistency in the ground? To me, the best the best drill to kind of get consistent with these things is what I call the Goldilocks drill. Okay. If I don't call it that, that's John Dunnigan and uh, and Will Wu that kind of came up with that yeah. kind of. Um, nomenclature for it, but basically you want to figure out, because if you just try to do 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, over and over and over again, you have no context for what 70 feels like. Right. So what you have to do is you have to do 85 and 65 and like play around with it um, to okay. find where that middle is. And so I would generally tell people to, to like, give me your 85 swing again. So you know what that feels like to do 85. Okay. And then mm -hmm. on the next one, I want you to give me 60. So you feel like you're kind of stacked over okay. it and then give me somewhere in the middle. And that's where we start to get more consistent is when we know where the edges are. Okay, let's try that. Sure. Do you want to hit three? Sure. Okay. So on the first one, give me what you gave me before. Oh, hang on one sec. Yeah, I guess the first step is really even keying into that feeling. You know, you yeah. just kind of do what you do. You don't really think about it. But totally. Yeah. We're back. Go for it. So okay. give me the 85 feel. So okay. get a big shift off of it into the trail side. Okay. My best strike of the day. That felt good. Now I want you to give me the complete opposite of that. Okay. Give me like. Did we get a, numbers on that one or no? Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, okay. You just want to, just want to see. I to match feeling real here. So I yeah. felt 85. Yeah. And we're gonna see if uh, the feel was 85. The real was. was yeah, it was. It was 92. Okay. So okay. you overdid good. it, which is fine. That's yeah. the, that was the goal of that particular swing, which sure. you get a lot. So now I want you to feel what like 60% feels like, where yep. you almost stay stacked on your lead side. Okay. Yeah. It's like doing a step drill without actually stepping. Sure. Good. I think we'll see a difference there. Yeah, I'm sure we will. Yeah. And what, what was my, our max? Uh, let's have a look. Into the drill side there. Yeah. That was 55. Max. Okay, so, all right, good. So, so I'm able, I'm actually, did, uh, overdid it on both sides. I told you to do 60 and 85, and you did 90 and... Yeah, I just wanted to make sure perfect. I was on okay, the Okay, so now you're okay. halfway between those two. Okay. But if you get halfway between 55 and 90, you should be around where we want you. <laughs> yep. The best thing to do in my practice swing, so all right, so here's my 90 feel, which is... Yeah. Yeah. And here's my 55 feel. Yeah. Now so I want to... Find the middle. Get in the middle of those Just two. right. What would we like? We'd like a, about like 72 or something like that. For right? you, uh, well, that, that's what our hypothesis is okay. right now, and then yeah, we would. We'll see. I hit that poorly. Bend it? Yeah, but I think I, my pressure might be all right. I'm not sure. Yeah, 73, 74. Oh, okay. So you got a good feel for what the middle feels like, mm -hmm. and now we would have to alter with the forces to match that. Feel. So we didn't talk about forces. We we're just trying to get that pressure shift in. Okay. But Let me try me, one more at 74 and see if I can get a strike on it. Sure. And at the end of this video, keep watching, guys. We're going to show you how to do this in a way that where maybe you don't need tens of thousands of dollars of tech to do it. <laughs> okay. So I really like that though, Scott. And I think this is oh, this is on one on. of the first okay. things people yeah, can ahead. do. Good. Is uh, yeah, I like feeling 90. 55 and then in between those two sure but with a strike that felt really good there we go that felt more comfortable yeah you got a lot more ball speed on that one a lot more club speed too 92 and a half yeah if that felt um this eight iron that felt like uh like athletic and reactive rather right. than the other ones who were like holding on something that one was 73. All right, so that's, okay, so it, it felt 80, yeah. it was 73, which is our hypothesis was that should be about Your kind where of middle one. Where, and this yeah. is where we can start tinkering within that small little range now. Uh -huh. So now we can say, give me 80, give me 70, now find the middle uh -huh. between those two and start tinkering in there. Um, and the tinkering, I think, is what um, can help you with your, like altering from your stock. Because what I've found, I've done this drill so many times that if I get behind a tree and I need to snap hook it behind oh, yeah. around a tree, I get way off the ball. Because I know from doing this drill that that creates a big rightward swing direction and, cool. and I can hit snap hooks from there. 
Okay, so this was the pressure off the ball, but then you said there's something to know about the force. Yeah, so you want to match forces up to pressure shifts. So yeah. if I get a ton of pressure into this right foot, most of the time that's me pushing this way mm -hmm. and creating that lateral force, which you know is kind of your bad swing. Slidey, yeah. Because then you don't have the brakes to stop it. And so um, a big pressure shift generally matches with a lot of lateral force, which can be fine for some people. That works well for some people. We know that can create some bad strikes mm -hmm. with you and uh, some, and you need to have the brakes to support that or the stopping power on your left foot. Okay. Um, a very centered pressure shift, I consider like an 80% pressure shift matches better with torque or rotational forces. Mm -hmm. um, and then a, you know, the one where you kind of stay stacked here. Yeah. Like when I stay stacked here, I better be going up or else I'm gonna hit some fat shots. So okay, gotcha. matching the ground reaction force to the pressure shift would be the next step once we dial in your pressure shifts. Okay, so let's, let's try that. Let's say that we <laughs> dialed it in. So we dialed in a more centered pressure shift, so now we got to get you doing more of the torque stuff. So we've mm -hmm. done this pretty much every camp, I think, with you. Okay, yeah, yeah. Is trying uh -huh. to get you to create more of oh, that gotcha. left foot push. So, so, so I'm stepping to the right, but not as much as before. It's, yeah. it's more centered, and then I'm trying to take the, uh, the carpet off yeah. the uh, off the. Well, and for the centered catalyst. pressure shift, I like to feel more of a turn backswing to get pressure into your right side rather than a, a slide. Uh, show, me, show me that here so people can see. Sure. For the centered what? So there's a lot of ways I can get pressure into my trail side. If I'm mm -hmm. centered, I want to feel like I'm getting this hit deep to create that pressure into my right side instead of oh, okay. like a lateral sway into the trail side. Yeah, so okay, I feel like cool. there's I more like turn in yeah. there. Yeah. So now instead of so much the, I mean, we'll also, we'll look at the trail, yep. but then what, what numbers are you looking at here as far as? Well, I would look at your torque numbers to see torque, if they're going up. Numbers. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Torque numbers is our bottom blue. It's the yellow. The blue is the vertical. Oh, gotcha. So good. Okay. So that one, you went 88 into the right side. Okay. Interesting. So you got a lot more into the trail yeah, side. I was, I, it gets me more when I actually open the hip more. Yeah. So you, and you ended up with kind of 80 force factor units of torque. That's just a, it's 68 foot pounds, but we normalize it to your body weight. And so uh -huh. let's just see how that is relative to one of the previous ones. Yeah, so good. So you used to have, you had 61 the previous swing. Yeah. And so you, you accomplished your goal of creating more torque, but you did it by getting way more pressure into the trail side. Okay, so let's, okay. So more torque without getting so far to the right. Yeah. There you go. That sounded like the most solid shot of the day. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, furthest one too. Yeah, most ball speed, near the most club speed. And so that was the most torque you've created. So that was 92 units of torque, which... Does it mean anything to you when you see these uh, these humps, if, they're, if they look smoother and less jagged? Yes. Because this one does look smoother. Yeah. yeah. And that was 83% in the trail side. So you nailed a, a much more centered pressure shift, maybe a hair too much into the trail side. but And yeah, this got a lot smoother, which tells me it's something that matches what your body does most efficiently. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so then I think the, the elite level challenge, kind of the Tommy, Tommy Fleetwood level challenge is this is an eight iron. Yeah. Is can I do that with, uh, we won't change it too much, with a six iron. Sure. Where, and you're saying that in the consistency of what the pros do, they're really uh, pretty consistent through the whole bag. Yeah, from what I've found. Oh, you if, want to give me a dot? If there are inconsistencies, um, oh yeah, I'll get you one. Um, that's where I generally ask, and like eight to six iron is almost the same thing. Like they're kind of mid irons. Like to me, maybe try a wedge, and let's just see if the wedge is consistent. Uh, that's that's a, a, a pitching wedge. That's a really good point because I'm not good with these. Okay, good. Yeah. So, and this is where like I would then look at your stats to see. Let me get you a dot. I would look at your stats to see your strokes gained in these different club conditions if they were very different because yeah. that would help me decide which one is probably more optimal for you. And generally what I find is a lot of times people will have... So you'll do that sometimes like beyond the swing catalyst data, you'll say like, hey, you're really sharp beyond all the other players with your pitching wedge. Yeah. With your four iron, you're like losing strokes and not very good. And then the yeah. biomechanics are different between each club, so why don't we make the biomechanics you can make, similar? Yeah, make your, make your four iron swing yeah. look more like your super consistent sure. pitching waist swing. And I've okay. seen that like a lot of people generally try to get more pressure shift off the ball with driver because they want to hit up on it and side bend. And if your irons are really good at 65 into your trail side, Mm -hmm. And you get like 95 with your driver, that's gonna oh, okay. not be a good combination generally. Gotcha. 
All right, so what I'm the goal here is to really feel super similar to what I was doing with the other one. Yeah. And for me, that is, we talked about this in the other school. My trigger has usually been in a lateral step drill kind of way. Yeah. But I think if I can get my trigger in more of a little bit of a rotational way. Yeah. So rather than this, this, then this. Yeah. Because if I do this, then I'm always this yeah. way. So this. Then and this, this is I where like we've seen bit. with the long drive guys, like a Kyle Berkshire trigger is more of a frontal plane or a lateral trigger. Yeah, like, show us. He's kind of like us. this. Yeah, right, right. right? Monster and he walk. Takes it away like that. Whereas uh, Martin Borgmeier is more of a. Right, oh, like a Matt yeah. Wolf, more mm -hmm. of a rotational kind of trigger. Oh, good point, yeah. Okay, so this was this pitching wedge. Yeah. Okay, so that was 73 into the trail side. The torque was still pretty good, though. 83 torque is kind of what you had in the mid-range. Yeah, that's the good for a six iron. Just yeah. a wedge, then. And so that's not bad at all. I, I would say just a hair more into the trail side with okay. that rotation, and then we have a pretty similar looking pattern. Let's try that. This Another way for rotational players to get more pressure into their trail side is to feel like they're twisting this foot as they turn back. Feel like you're really ripping that foot in the ground, like externally rotating it. Yeah. So like as if, if there was a, a slick piece of paper here, I would be would do doing that, that yeah. way. Yeah. That's a good rotational strategy to get more pressure into the right side and get people focusing on the trail. Okay. So we're going rotational trigger. There you go. Oh, I like that. Okay. Okay. All right, that was, that was solid. really solid. Yeah. That felt great. 130 carry wedge. Good. So that had 91 torque, which is pretty similar to what you had with the... Yeah, it's the most. The six iron. It was more than the six iron, right? Uh, I think there was one six iron that was about the same. Oh, okay. That was our... And there you are. You're about 84, which was kind of similar to what you were uh, with the six iron. So that's... I think we've kind of dialed it in for you. We've, and you see how smooth that torque is now? So your opinion, for me, you think I'm most consistent there around 84, 82? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And like that's better, our, oh, better than it's 65. Or 90. Okay, yeah. oh, okay, you're right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so somewhere in the middle there. So I think the Goldilocks drill is a good one to help dial it in for you. And then working on the appropriate force for your pressure shift. So if you're awesome. a centered player, you want to work on some of that rotational torque type stuff. If you are a right side dominant player, a trail side dominant player, and you get way over here, then you got to work on that lateral okay. force. Um, and then if you stay on your lead side, you got to create some verticals. Okay, so I always like to make my video, the, the thing I think makes Be Better Golf a little bit different is that I really try to make things actionable for people to take action like yeah. pretty much right away. Only about half of a percent of the people watching this have a swing catalyst. There's a lot more people though that if you really look around your area, you can probably find a coach. I mean, they're, they're really spreading throughout uh, the world yeah. where you can find people with this. So let's think of a, a way that people can do this without the tech. Yeah, with no tech, I would just get on a driving range and take five balls and hit your feel of getting way much pre or a lot of pressure into your trail side. I mean, we don't really need to do it, but like yeah, hitting five balls, it, but... getting way to the right. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a launch monitor, just monitor, like where do the balls land? How does the strike feel? Mm -hmm. What's the curvature? Like or monitor how the shots are and then yeah. do the opposite. Get away, like feel like you're stacked on your lead side and hit five and monitor the strike, monitor how so far the So step one, go. drift to the right yeah. and hit. Step two, stay on the left. And hit. And then step three, go in the middle somewhere. Somewhere in the middle, yeah, yeah. And then and generally, what, yeah. if I'm working with a player and I do those 15 swings, I'll say, if you had to play golf in one of those three ways, which one would you choose? If I said you have to go to the first tee right now, yeah. you're going to say, well, getting way to the right is awful because I snap hook it off the planet and I chunk a bunch of yeah. them. Okay, poor, perfect. Eliminate yeah. that one. Yeah. I'm okay on my lead side. I hit some, like I get the low point in front of it. I, I get some decent yeah. shots, but there's some little cutty ones there I don't like. So I would pick the middle one. Perfect. Yeah, right. But then you know that. Or you might be like, you might I'm be not in between this the two. I'm the somewhere. Right. Yeah, yeah. But now you've eliminated, you know, uh -huh. getting way right or whatever. So that's a good way to learn kind of what your appropriate pressure shift is without any of these. And I think what we learned for me is I like the feeling because I've done so many step drills and I've also like, you know, being a baseball player and stuff like that, I really like the feeling Loading of like, kind of like a crow hop kind of throw. Yeah. But I think if I can get that feeling, but get it through more this kind of stepping yeah. rather than this kind of stepping. Yeah. So, so, so traditionally the step drills that, that we show this, 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 right. rather we can get it more this, this, this. Right. It won't be as corkscrewy when you actually do it because you're putting the club out there and stuff. Yeah. But I think that is a really big difference and little things like that you just aren't going to come to on your own right you know you got you got to really experiment with feeling pretty uncomfortable
you could be the guy on the range. You have to be comfortable, but like you know, Ben like Ben Hogan did, like hitting some really really bad shots as you're trying yeah. to figure it out. Totally. Yeah. And then they become, as I told you with my own game, like doing the way right swing, getting way into the trail side. I can hit, I can snap hook it off the world when I do that, okay. and I just learned that by doing this drill. And now you have that shot. Now I have that shot if yeah. I need it. Yeah. So. Cool guys. All right. So if you're interested in coming out to work with Scott and I, we're doing a, a golf school throughout the year. We'll be doing a, a few, but. Really, we're doing a golf school coming up very soon in just like about a week or two on March 18th and 19th in Murrieta, California at the beautiful golf club of Rancho, California. So uh, Eric Mike Tree, who has won over 60 times professionally, is hosting us and having us out there. Lee Dietrich, who's on the channel all the time, will also be there. And uh, it's going to be a small group of golfers. Everybody is going to be able to get on the Swing Catalyst multiple times, individually working with Scott, doing similar stuff to what we did today. And that's really, we see some great before and afters from that because uh, you're not really uh, fighting yourself or trying to be something that you're interpreting from TV or whatever. It's just like, okay, this is what you do the best. And there's some, uh, there's some legitimate science behind it. It's not really as, you know, in the history of golf, there's been some things that are like questionable about like if this, whether or not this is actually something that will improve people. The data is like super clear on it makes people better. If you're interested in what Dr. Scott was talking about there and you want some actionable advice of how to get better at golf using this new information about the pressures and the swing, you got to check out the driving force. It's something that I made with Dr. Scott and Milo Lines PGA that really goes through the different parts of the golf swing and how you can be more consistent and more powerful using some of this information. It has a lot of actionable advice about how to take this stuff and use it to become a better golfer. It's not just theory, it's things that actually work. So check it out, it's over on bebettergolf.net slash driving force. So if you're interested, check it out today because just for today and probably the next week, I'm going to put it on sale because I really think this can help a lot of Be Better Golfers and I wanna get it out in more people's hands. Thanks, bye.